questions we have Sherry, Jen, and Harrison. Say hi, everyone. Hey. Um, and they are they are going to be our scientists telling us all about how they study fish populations in Florida. Um, so let's get started. All right. Okay. Hey guys, uh, we would love to, we're so glad you're here. We would love to see your faces in person, um, but we're struggling through virtually this year. So just bear with us. Um, we're super excited that we get to share this research with you. So let's get started. Okay, the biggest thing that people always come up and ask us is like, who are you guys? Like, what do you do? How can I do what you do? Because we do have like a really cool job. Um, we are fisheries biologists with the state of Florida, and we did take a lot of heavy science and math uh, background, some classes to, to get us here, but don't let that scare you. If this is really what you want to do, um, just stick with your program and put your nose to the grindstone and you can get there. So just have faith in yourself. Um, we also do a lot of field work, which is very physical. So we're out on boats, we're pulling nets, um, we're lifting heavy things, you're outside all the time. So I recommend definitely keep fit, get outside, get exercise. If you love outdoors, it should be easy, especially nowadays. Um, just keep up with that, that'll really help, um, along with volunteering. Volunteering is a huge thing because not only are you helping out other organizations, but you're seeing if this is really what you want to do and you're meeting people and you're getting experience that's going to help you find a job later on. Um, all of us have at least a bachelor's degree and as with most of the sciences, a graduate degree really helps get you further along um, as well. So for our offshore program, what we do is monitor reef fish populations throughout the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it's mainly been the eastern Gulf of Mexico, which is kind of closer to our shore, but we're expanding that as we speak, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, the reason this is so important is because when we get a good picture of how many fish are out there, what species are out there over a long period of time, we can start to tell if there's one species or a bunch of species that are in trouble or a certain area that's in trouble. They're starting to decline in population, maybe something like an oil spill or it could be overfishing or an invasive species like the lionfish. Um, by finding out these types of um, things, we can let the people know who make the rules and regulations about fishing so that we can change those. Maybe we can relax the fishery so you can fish more. Or maybe we need to fish a little less on a certain species so they have a chance to recover. And so that's super important. Um, when we talk about offshore on this next slide, what we mean, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, what we mean is anywhere from the beach all the way out to 180 miles off of land. And we can even go as deep as 600 feet, which is pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. And we can do that with our cameras. We can still see fish down there. Um, we started doing this in about 2008. And you'll look at this map on your right. And it's got all these different zones. These are all the different places that we've been able to sample. And we started out with just a small space. And now we go all the way from the panhandle in zone 10 down to zone two, which is the dry tortugas and the keys. So we cover a lot of space, which means we're on boats all the time. Um, sometimes we can be gone for up to two, two weeks or so at a time. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're trying to decide what, we, what you'd like to do as far as your career. So Harrison's going to get us started just talking about how we get this process going. So as Sherry was saying, it's kind of our goal to make sure the fish populations are healthy and happy, um, but we cover a lot of ground when we do it. And one thing about the Gulf of Mexico is it's a very diverse place, right? There's a lot of different types of habitats um, in the in the Gulf. And so you can see some of the pictures here. We have reef habitats. We have a lot of sandy areas. We have artificial reefs that um, various organizations have put in the water to provide structure and habitat for fish. And you can see from some of these pictures that different types of fish 
like different types of habitats. And so what we need to be able to do is A, know what habitats are out there. We need to know where they are, how many there are, and then we need to be able to go sample them to see what kind of fish are on them and how many fish are on them. So kind of our starting point to do that is we need a roadmap of the Gulf of Mexico. And to do that, we actually use our side scan sonar. So with our side scan sonar, um, like I said, the water's really deep and we need to be able to see the bottom. And how we do that is we actually see with sound. Um, it's kind of like these pictures, you can see the bat and the dolphin use echolocation. And what they're doing is they're actually sending out a sound signal and listening for the echo. And so we have a machine that does this for us called a tow fish and we drop that in the water. You can see the video here. This is some of our scientists crew members and they take this tow fish, they pull it off, they drop it off the back of the boat and it's attached to a long cable. And when it's underwater, it looks like that middle picture there. And as this is going, it's emitting sounds and listening for the return. And we have a computer that actually makes that into a picture. So this is what it looks like when the bottom is going by. We actually get kind of a live stream picture of what the bottom looks like. It's not like a picture from your uh, camera, but it's actually a picture made with those sound waves. So when we get all this info, what we have to do is come back to the lab and we take all those pictures we took of the bottom using the sonar and we essentially go through and we circle the areas that we think, hey, there's some habitat that we want to go sample and look for fish. So here's some uh, comparisons of what those bottoms look like on the sonar and in real life. So you have on the bottom left there some uh, rocks, you know, on the on the sonar screen and then in real life and then some sandy areas, some flat bottom. Actually, a lot of the Gulf of Mexico is pretty sandy, not a whole lot there. And then the top right there is kind of cool and you can see uh, it's an artificial reef. It's actually an old retired army tank um, and they sank that out there to give the fish from some structure to live on. So that's what it looks like. We use the side scan, we come back to the lab and we find these habitats and then we know, okay, here's where we want to go sample. These are the habitats we want to look at. So now that we've found the fish friendly habitat using side scan sonar, how do we physically see what's down there? Well, we have built our own underwater camera arrays that are dropped to the sea floor to see what uh, side scan had actually found and see what fish are living down there. There are four different cameras that face outward that gives us a 360 degree view of the habitat and the fish is living on it. Um, and these uh, cameras have lenses uh, that are built to work like eyes to see underwater and the, and the fish that live on that uh, habitat as well. They record 30 minute videos to identify the fish and the habitat they live on, which is really cool. So why do we uh, use these cameras? Well, they provide a permanent record of the habitat and the fishes that live on there during the time of sampling. The videos that recorded are also used to identify, count, and measure the fishes without ever taking them out of the water. These cameras are also less invasive than other sampling method, method, methods <laughs> used like uh, nets or hook and line and can be used in areas that nets can't reach such as those um, artificial reefs that Harrison was talking about. Also, these cameras can be set from about 30 feet to 600 feet, which is far beyond the abilities of divers to get this job done. Next, we're gonna see a video uh, that provides some background knowledge about the camera systems that we use from start to finish. Since 2008, biologists from FWRI's Fisheries Independent Monitoring Group have conducted an expansive offshore research monitoring program to provide timely, long-term fisheries independent data. 
executive for a variety of state and federally managed reef fishes. The non-lethal methodology used in these research efforts employs video footage recorded using stationary underwater camera array systems. These camera arrays consist of two stereo video cameras and two GoPro cameras filming from all four sides of a metal framed pod. Here you can see schools of Barracuda, Amberjack, Gray Snapper, and Goliath Grouper as the pod comes to rest near the deck of a sunken vessel. Deployment locations are pre-selected to target both natural and artificial reef habitats. Each pod is tethered to a rope with surface buoys so that it can be found and retrieved later. When the recording cycle is complete, the pods are retrieved. The surface line is snagged by tossing a grappling hook and the pod is hauled to the surface via a pot hauler installed on the starboard side of the vessel. Back in the lab, the videos are read by biologists who record data on observed habitat and occurrences of all fish species seen. With specifically developed video software, individual fishes can also be measured when they present a full side view to the camera. This relatively new, non-lethal methodology has been implemented as a way to assess population diversity, abundance, and individual sizes of fishes in a variety of natural and artificial reef habitats. Data provided by this video survey are used to estimate changes in the abundance of reef fishes in state and federal waters and are important for assessing the overall health and status of fish populations. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? You feel like, hey, why do we even need to use a different type of gear since cameras are so cool they can go down so far well we also use what what's called a trawl and the reason we use it is because we can cover a longer area in the same amount of time that when we drop those cameras we're only dropping it on a small area um, in order to do that you know the gulf of mexico is a really big place and it takes a lot of money to do it. We require funding. And so we work with different organizations, different groups so that we can come together and you can see all these little dots on the map. Those are just different groups, different states that do this work so that we can combine all that data and get the best picture we can as to the health of the fish in the Gulf of Mexico. So what we are gonna do now is show you a small video because you might not know what a trawl looks like or what it does. So this is a huge net. It's 40 feet long, it's crazy, and it sinks to the bottom and the boat pulls it for half an hour. So you can see here it's on a sandy bottom and as it starts to get pulled, it's gonna scoop up fish. Well, guess what? It's not gonna catch all the fish. Look at that. That little guy just swam right by and we missed him. So we're not getting to see all of the fish that live in this area, but it does give us a pretty good idea of some of the ones, especially the guys that live on the sandy bottoms. Because you can imagine, we wouldn't want to pull this kind of net in a beautiful coral reef system. We can drop a camera and not you know, worry about ruining anything. But for something like this, we need to make sure that it's sandy areas. That's why we use those side scans, that uh, equipment that Harrison was talking about. So after the trawl is finished, we bring the net back up and voila, we catch fish. So usually it's, we, we get some pretty cool stuff. You see some flounders there. Um, there's a really cool little pancake bat fish down there on the bottom. Looks like somebody stepped on him, but that's actually just how, he, how he's shaped. Um, and the best thing about using the trawl, besides the fact that we're, we're getting to you know, look at a bigger area is that we actually get to have the fish in hand so we can do studies on them to find out their life history, make sure they're healthy. So what kind of stuff can we do? Well, we can actually find out how old they are. We do age and growth. What we do is we take the ear bones, their otoliths, and we take a look at them and they, they collect rings just like uh, a tree every year collects another ring. That's the same thing that happens with their ear bones. So by counting the rings on their ear bones, we can tell how old the fish is and whether the population is doing okay. We can also do diet studies. We can't just come up to them and ask them what they eat. So we look at 
the, st the stomachs and we find out what's inside, which sounds easy, but most of the time it's usually eaten and ground up. So they, we have scientists that look under the microscope and figure out what these fish are eating. And then we can figure out the entire food web for the system to make sure everything is healthy. We also need to sex the fish, find out whether it's male or female. That way we can tell if their reproduction strategy is working and whether we have enough of a ratio to male or females or if there's something going on there. We can get their weight. We can figure out how big they are. That's something that we can't really do yet anyway um, by camera. Um, and that will, figure, that will help us uh, know if the fish is growing right. And then we also do mercury studies which are really important because we, or a lot of us like to eat fish and fish have mercury in them because they're in the water. We wanna make sure that the, the fish that you're eating are safe to eat. So that's kind of why we do all of this stuff and we're gonna send it back to Harrison. He'll wrap it up for us. So yeah, we've talked a lot about kind of what we're doing out there and why we're doing it. But just to give you a quick little rundown um, so you remember all of the gears that, that we use out there, our first step is the roadmap of the ocean, right? We have to go out there and, and search this, this large area for where we want to set gear. We use that uh, side scan sonar, right? We see the bottom with sound. And after that, we find some places where we think, hey, that's some good habitat. I bet there's some fish we want to see there. And we can go out and we drop our underwater cameras and they give us really good information on how many fish are there, what kinds of fish are there, and we can even get how long those fish are, what their length is. In some areas, we also go and we pull our trawl nets and our trawl nets give us a really good opportunity to get those fish in hand. And as Sherry was talking about, get some of those samples that we can't get from the camera. So that's kind of our overall the gears that we use in this kind of quest to count all of the fish in the ocean. It's an impossible job, but we think we have some some pretty good tools to be able to do that. Okay, so some final thoughts for you to take away from our presentation today is that our work is to provide the science behind the regulations. However, our goal is to ensure a healthy population of fish for you, your friends and family to go out and catch. By making these rules such as size and catch limits, this allows the overall fish populations to stay healthy for you while you go out and fish for them. So what can you do to help us reach our goal? One option is to make ocean healthy seafood choices while eating out or purchasing seafood at your local grocery store by utilizing the Seafood Watch app or uh, their website. They give you sustainably uh, fished or um, harvested fishes for you to choose from. Next, you can participate or even start your own beach, lake, or stream cleanup. And lastly, please fish responsibly. Check the size limits of the fishes that you're going out to catch. Only keep those that are in season or within the size range. Maybe practice some catch and release, especially on those smaller fishes. Have them grow great, big and strong for others to catch. And lastly, please dispose your fishing line properly. Thank you so much for participating in our presentation today. Uh, please feel free to ask us any questions. Thank you. Wow, there's a lot of really good questions. Um, so by fisheries, does it count dolphins and sharks? Do you guys study dolphins and sharks too? I can take that one, Michelle, if you want. Um, we don't study dolphins. Um, we do study sharks though. We have, we record them when we see them on video um, or if we happen to catch them in the nets. But we have a, another FWRI group, another group that actually studies mammals. So the dolphins kind of fall under their reign. But anything else that's actually fish and not a mammal, we do study. Do you go all over Florida? Yes, they do. I'll just answer that for you guys. <laughs> yes, they do go all over Florida. So that's pretty neat, right? Um, how many fish species are native to Florida? That's a tricky question. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands, you think? Uh, yeah, there's, 
it's funny because as time has gone on and the temperature of the water has changed, we have species that are moving up into areas. So they're becoming, they're not originally native, but you know, they are kind of creeping up in the Gulf of Mexico as the temperatures change. So that kind of changes from year to year too, but um, we do try to keep an overall, we have a whole department called stock assessment and they take all of our information and they're the guys that really know what's going on as far as what um, changes there are and they, they report those to the regulators. So here's an interesting one. Why do you all look at these habitats? underwater. Harrison, you want to take that? You are muted. How about now? <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, we look at all these different habitats over, you know, to get to that end goal of being able to assess the fish populations. Um, and like Sherry and Jen were saying earlier, kind of our main goal is to make sure that those fish, you know, because a lot of people enjoy the Gulf of Mexico to go fishing. A lot of people make their living commercially fishing there. Um, and we're kind of out to protect those resources. We want people to be able to enjoy them. Um, and we also want people to be able to enjoy them long term. Um, so this information really helps us kind of keep a feel for what is out there and what we can do to help it and um, how much we can go and enjoy these resources. So that's kind of our main goal. and. Uh, the habitats are just one of the ways we get there. Thank you for answering that. Um, so for cameras, do people jump down into the water and take photos or is it just equipment that you lower down? Uh, I can take that question, Michelle. Uh, so the cameras are actually deployed from our boats. We do not send people down uh, to actually survey that uh, area. There are different departments that actually do utilize divers to do so, but in our department, we do not. Instead, we send our own equipment to do that. And that allows us to go beyond uh, divers' abilities. So divers can only really go um, probably somewhere around 100 feet, and that they would still need uh, to take um, precautions in order to do so. However, with our equipment, we're able to drop that equipment down to about 600 feet and uh, shallower. So that gives us a lot more area to be able to focus our research on and it's well beyond the abilities of divers to do so. Um, another camera question, has anything ever bit your camera like a shark? Has a shark ever bit your camera? Um, I've never seen a shark bite the cameras. However, a lot of uh, fishes are very curious about our camera systems. Um, some of the fishes that are are um, gray trigger fish. They are very curious about uh, the lenses and maybe seeing the reflection. Um, red grouper, they're also uh, very curious and uh, red snapper. Um, Harrison, Sherry, if either of you have any other um, fishes have you seen <laughs> on camera? I think you did a pretty good job of naming them all. Um, yeah. We actually, I did a study where I had a, a gray trigger fish and some grouper in a tank and we were trying to film them with our cameras and the gray trigger fish was actually behind our cameras chewing on the wires while we were trying to film, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the camera, the, the pod is baited so that kind of attracts them too. They they can smell that fish and they're just, you know, nibbling up little pieces in the water. So what are some ways that you study fish without hurting them? Which um, pretty much all of these different methods, you're not hurting the fish, you're not killing them to study them, you're observing them. So um, pretty much all the methods that we learned here today. Um, let's see. Have you seen any mermaids? Mermaids are pretend. Mermaids are not real, um, but they're fun pretend characters in the world, you know. Um, let's see. What is NOAA? Oh, good question. Um, NOAA is our branch 
well, actually, it's the federal government has a, a special branch that a lot of different areas fall under, and one of them happens to be fisheries. So we are at the state level, and NOAA is at the federal level, which just is above us. But we kind of all do the same thing. And so NOAA is actually go ahead. <laughs> NOAA is actually a really big one there. Yeah. Oceanic and atmospheric. So a lot of fisheries, the weather, the hurricanes, they're a huge organization um, and they work with a lot of different people. So you can think of it as NOAA covers the entire country and mm -hmm. different parts of the world too. Um, and we here at the Research Institute study Florida. So we are Florida specific. Um, how many fish do you guys get per day? That's an interesting question. Well, it depends on the gear. Um, there are days when we're in a certain area, like a sandy area, if we're dropping cameras, we may not see that many fish around those areas. There's not a lot of habitat. Fish like to hide from predators. Um, so you're ten you tend to see less fish in the sandy areas. And then there could be days when we're trawling where if we're over you know a certain area where there do there is a lot of fish there happens to be a little more fish um we may have a whole net full of fish it kind of depends on the area and the time of the year because they do move around a lot of fish move around so and we have one more minute left um somebody's asking what's the biggest fish you've ever seen how big like as big as a person as big as a I've seen a whale shark when we've been offshore, and that's the coolest thing, and they're the biggest fish in the sea, so. <laughs> Can't beat that. Wow. How big is that, like a school bus? Yeah, it's. I think they're about 40. The ones we saw were about maybe 30 feet or so, but they get bigger than that. It was really cool. That's the first time I'd ever seen uh, whale sharks in the wild, and, and it was really cool. You guys have pretty cool jobs and we certainly appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge about how you study marine fisheries in Florida. Um, Jen, Sherry, Harrison, thanks so much for talking with us today.